Now Raze is going to need to make some magic happen here to stay on track for a top four finish. Let's get right into it here. Starting in the top right hand side, playing as the red Protoss, it is Hellraiser. These guys actually were teammates once upon a time. They were both part of Clash. Hellraiser left Clash a little while ago. Lambo left them a bit earlier. In the bottom left side, the man who's now uh, representing the Shopify Rebellion, it is Lambo. It seems like Lambo for a very long time, he was that player also that a lot of people were talking about as one of the guys that, you know, was going to become one of the really good players and do very well. Then he struggled at first in tournaments, but then he started doing better and better. And now he's kind of reached a point where it feels like he might be one of the guys slightly behind the top three that we have in Europe with uh, Clem, Rainer, and Serral. Would you agree with that? Absolutely, and I think that's very fair. Whoa, look at this start, by the way. Gateway and Forge. I already mentioned it. Hellraiser is capable of a couple of cannon rushes here and there. And it seems like we're going to kick game one off with some cannon shenanigans. Now, Lambo did not go for hatchery first. Thought. Lambo is obviously familiar with the reputation that Hellraiser has. This is not his first rodeo. So he decided to play it safe and go for the spawning pool first. Let's see if Hellraiser still wants to go for cannons. Nope. He's going to change. Well, what? Okay, this is very weird. What are we doing, Todd? Why are we building a cannon before we expand? What is this? A ruddy build? He saw, the, he saw the lane timing and thought maybe he needed that in advance to make sure that he can hold comfortably against the six slings that are going to be headed his way. And then Hellraiser, when he got to the expansion of Lambo with the probe, he probably thought, oh, I see my reputations precedes me. <laughs> no greedy build here. Hmm. I mean, I don't think the links are going to get much done, but this is still not bad for Lambo, even if these links do absolutely nothing, because this Nexus was way later than the Nexus normally is. Pros players like to go for just a gateway in the fast expand. Now we build a forge because we potentially wanted to be cheeky on the other side of the map. Well, that didn't happen, but then we also build a Cybercore and a cannon before dropping that Nexus, which means that Lambo, in a way, has already done economic damage even though he hasn't done any economic damage, if that makes sense. He doesn't really, but for StarCraft players, it makes perfect sense. We all understand <laughs> what you meant, Kev. Good job. Well, let's say Hellraiser has done economic damage to himself, Dot. It's self-harm at this point. Yeah. Definitely not good here. Those feel like that Nexus is massively delayed. We got a Stargate at the back of the main base here from him. And... Do you know any tendencies for Hellraiser? Like you talked about, you know, but his possible cannon rushes and stuff. But when he plays targets, what, what are you feeling here? Oracle or Phoenix mostly? I've got no, I don't think he's going to. Well, he likes Phoenixes. He actually had a couple of epic games a few years ago against Saro where he would fly around with a lot of Phoenixes and even found some success. I think he took a map off Saro at one of the Kiev events that James mentioned in our little pre show. Uh, so there is a chance, but I don't think you ever want to play Phoenixes if you already have a bad eco to begin with. And yeah, Hellray seems to agree, so he's going to queue up the Void Ray. He's going to try to get lucky. I wonder if he cancels the Shade. He does not cancel the Shade, so he's going to play it safe. But I don't know, man. This is just not a good start, though. There's no other way to spin it. It seems like Lambo was a bit distracted by these Adepts. So he's actually been supply blocked at 44, a little longer than he should have been. That's going to help Hellraiser at least to get back into this game. But it's, it's not a great start for the Protoss. No other way to spin it. Yeah, 10 links does feel like it's a good amount. I like that he added some of them in order to try and catch maybe the adepts down on the map. But now he's getting on top of those two here. Oh, if this had been a little closer to... Actually, they broke out for a second, but both of them are going to fall. So very nice catch by Lambo here. Getting two adepts. Just losing like, what was that, like two links? Yeah, that makes it even harder for Hellraiser to go up to three bases because you don't really want to wipe in too many units, especially not if you're investing in the second Stargate and a Fleet Beacon. I don't know if we're going to open up with a lot of Void Rays, but the looks of it, I think this is going to be the two carrier opening. And we'll take it from there. I wonder if he's going to do the DNS thing of going up to carrier three and four. And he's also firing up plus one air weapons. Yeah, normally I'm a fan of these kinds of builds, but I do feel that your early game is very important. And his early game was just not as good. That Nexus was just so late. And if your second Nexus is late, you obviously have less probes to work with. We're now five minutes into the game, Johan. And not only have we not killed a single drone, not only are we stuck on two bases, we're still seven workers behind. That's not the way it should be. 
I wonder if the lair started maybe a little late. Lambo definitely droned up like a madman here before finally starting that. I mean, obviously, it's one of the quick upgrades to complete here. And yeah, with that double carrier, maybe Hellraiser inspired by what we saw from... Uh, but he saw from DNS earlier. It looked pretty convincing, that one game. Hellraiser going for the third base, but doesn't have units quite in position here to defend against the initial links on it. And on the other side, we're getting roaches mm -hmm. right now. Yep, and we're getting roaches and we're getting queens. We watched the game of Cero earlier this week where he just marched the queens to the other side of the map against the Void Rays of Harstem and Cero made it look easy. Lambo's doing this of 62 drones, which I feel like is a few more than we normally see. But the queens are already on their way and... I mean, you know what I would actually like it from Hellraiser Todd, and this is going to sound bizarre, but Tempests are not bad in these scenarios. Like, carriers are fantastic, but the downside of carriers is that the build time is so damn long in the Stargate that I think by the time that these two carriers are out, that Nexus is super dead. If he lets it finish up, there is no way he's going to keep it alive. If you cancel it, you're also very far behind. And I know this is not very fun to rate? listen to, but I just don't know what Hellraiser could do. He's going to lose his Void Ray to make things go from bad to worse. He's going to end up losing a couple of probes. And at this point, though, this doesn't feel like a fair fight. Yeah, there's so much Zerg at his doorstep here. And only two carriers, the next two will take forever to come out. They're actually pretty close right now to come out. But he wishes he already had them. Plus one attack about to finish. Links are going to start getting it. Look at the supply. He has double. The supply of Hellraiser right now here, Lambo just streaming in with a swarm of Zerg. Yep, and I mean the carriers are gonna uh, run out of interceptors eventually if they don't kill the queens. Uh, Hellraiser needs to choose right now, what do you want to kill? Do you want to kill Ravagers, Roaches, Zerglings, cross the bar, go down on the carriers. They won't kill the carriers, but that's a lot of damage. But Hellraiser, while being on two bases, is already losing 20 probes. And this game is just all over, Todd. I feel like it was over before it ever even truly began. The opening just did not work out at all. And even if we defend here, we don't really defend. Even the Interceptor count here, he's gonna keep on falling as the Twins the back down to 13. He's having to remake that all the time, barely has any income. Lambo, with a very strong timing here, identified early what was happening. He was like, yeah, I'll just get you out of here if you try to get fancy uh, with uh, this target, double target opener here against me. Yeah, I think this Nexus is gonna fall. The carriers really don't have a lot of firepower anymore. The interceptor count is incredibly low. Currently eight interceptors, guys. That's something that could be done of one carrier. We are getting up to five carriers, and the only thing that Lambo needs to make them sure of is that he doesn't lose all the units here immediately, doesn't buy any time, and somehow dies against the one base carrier void ray attack. But Lambo wasn't born last night. At this point, he's got one job and one job only, and that is just get enough units out to eventually take out this little Protoss force. And with 10 Corruptors already on the way, thought, I think we're heading in that direction. Yeah. There is a lot of carriers, and this army looks somewhat scary, but... They're not very mobile. By the time they get across the map, there's going to be a lot more units by Lambo. And as soon as Hellraiser moves out, there's always going to be Link streaming into his Expo, streaming into his main, which it's very hard for him to defend against that without having enough gateway units. And at this point, he doesn't have a gateway. So it's just going to be two Void Rays trying to kill Link oh. before they kill all of the probes that are in the main base. And Contaminate even being used on one of the Stargates. Let's just take a look at the carrier fight in the bottom left. But the biggest problem for Hellraiser is that if he lose, runs out of money, he will also not be able to rebuild the uh, Interceptor count. But the Corrupted count is already way too high. GG. Lambo wins game one. And I'm going to double check this at the income graph. But I believe he had... Well, other than I guess the first minute. Lambo was basically always up in worker stuff. From minute two till the very end of the game, Lambo had a worker lead. And that's not how PVZs normally look like. In the start, Protoss has a few more units. Then they have like a seven, eight little worker advantage. Then once the three bases kick in and they start up and running, sometimes four minutes, four and a half minutes into the game, that's when the worker count equals out. And then Zerg takes the lead. But Lambo was ahead at minute two, minute three, minute four, minute five, till the very end of the game. And that's why this game looked so incredibly easy for him. He did one Void Ray into Carriers, right? I think if you do this build, maybe you have to go Oracle first, so you can at least harass a little bit. But a Void Ray also feels good defensively. I, maybe a bit better. I, yeah, maybe, but at the end of the day, when your Nexus is so late, you just have a garbage economy. And if you have a garbage economy, when you go up against one of the best Zerg players in the world, we can say that. That's not an overstatement. I'm not saying he's the best, but Lambo is one of the best Zerg players in the world. And if you cripple yourself by building a Forge, a Cybercore, and a cannon before expanding. Well thought. 
even if you're the son of Zess and Stats, you're not going to win a game. Do you think he could have made Nexus, then Cannon, and maybe kept the probe in the wall to get a pylon, and that's what he should have done for sure? Yes, I. whatever he could have done, I don't know what the plan was originally. I have the feeling that he did want to Cannon Rush, right? That's the only thing that makes sense, unless he was super convinced that Lambo was going for a 12 pool, but it'd be a very strange 12 pool. So the feeling to me is that Hellraiser wanted to Cannon Rush. He saw that Lambo went spawning pool first. He's like, okay, I can't do that. But then I think he panicked. And I yes, whatever happens, I think he still should have dropped the Nexus even before the Cybercore. Like, yeah, then you delay your tech a little bit, but at least you have a decent economy. But when you're building the core and the forge and the cannon all before the Nexus, it's kind of killing yourself. Unless Lambo throws away the lead and Lambo would make an outrageous amount of units of 40 drones that is just barely not enough to cancel the third Nexus. That was a minute later than it normally is anyway, but Todd Lambo wasn't born last night. He knows what to do in these situations and he made it look easy. He sure did. Let's see if he can continue here with this on Blackburn. Starting in the bottom left hand side of the map, playing as the Red Protoss representing Ukraine, it's Hellraiser. And in the bottom right side of Blackburn, we're looking at the main base of the man who is still undefeated in this season of the Dream X StarCraft 2 Master Summer. 2-0 in series, 5-0 in maps. It is Lambo. Yeah, Lambo looked really good here. He did exactly what he needed to. I like that the opener wasn't greedy. You know, some players, it feels like they want to play with fire. You know, if you play against a player whom you know is capable, very capable of cannon rushing you or playing very aggressive, why would you risk playing greedy? Just play it safer, you know, like just go for the pull, gas, then the hatchery. That's what he did. And I really feel like that's what put him in a very comfortable position. And then from there, he was just like, okay, well, you haven't harassed me once. You're obviously going for Stargate. I'm just going to get Quince and uh, show you the least popular march of Protoss players here. <laughs> Are you a thousand percent sure that it was pull gas before hatch? Because I thought it was just pull into hatch and then a gas. Oh, yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah, okay. Like, it, it felt so that, yeah, it felt that Lambo's opening was still quite economic. It's just not the most economic opening. But by no means was he like going for an uneconomic opening himself, and that's why Hellraiser responded the way he did. It, this was not a 12 pool, it wasn't a 13 pool. I think it was either 15, but probably even just 16. It was just a safe, conservative opening which is something that I think you can do indeed if you feel like your opponent could cannon rush you or if you just feel that you are the superior player and even if you put yourself in a tiny disadvantage, you'll be able to overcome that with just solid defense. There's some probe shenanigan here around the top side of the map. I don't know how diligently most Zergs would check that corner, but I feel like usually they're very good at dispatching like one or two links to check every corner to see if there were to be any proxy, but Mm -hmm. Hellraiser is really selling this really well right now in that he has a probe right outside the ramp of Lambo, which he will now find and cannot chase. He sends yeah, the link right. out. And you know, Todd, I feel that uh, the longer a map is around, the more uh, diligent the Zerg players become with checking every corner, right? But Blackburn is still relatively new. You just kind of look for the obvious, and if you assume that the game is obvious, sometimes we get a bit lazy as StarCraft players, and we're like, ah, oh, nothing weird is happening. And I'm kind of wondering what Hellraiser is going to do with that probe anyway. I'm kind of feeling Stargate opening into Resonating Glaive follow-up. Yeah. Uh, but then we don't build a robot, but we just proxy a gateway, right? And then we warp in a mirror in the depths there. That's the only thing I can really think of at this point. Yeah, that, that's what I'm seeing as well on the menu here of Protoss. Just, you know, he's chewing something special like this with a big gateway attack. And he just would need one single pylon across the map, even though uh, it would be a bit of a slow warp in without the gateway. Probably would be enough like to really surprise a Zerg player like Lambo if he's able to keep on hiding it for as long as possible. Maybe you should take the gas at the expo to fully mm. sell this, but you also don't want to do it too early because then you might raise all kind of alarms uh, towards Lambo. Oh. It might even be more extreme than that. We might not even get a Twilight. It might just be a Stargate into a gateway attack, which is very hard of the swarm to me. But because those builds have so fallen out of the meta, they can actually work. Because Zerg yeah. players have their responses mapped out to a T and they know how many drones they can get away with before you can possibly have a Twilight upgrade or a Robo follow-up after your Stargate opening. And this just hits a little bit sooner and quite a bit sooner even than most things. And if Lambo doesn't have the units in the right place, this could definitely get tricky. Now Lambo is like, hmm, we're four minutes in and all I've seen is your Stargate. 
you make it seem like you want to go up to three bases, but you're not in a massive urgency. And while we're speaking about all of this, a second target is going up in the back of the main base of Hellraiser. And Todd, I am officially confused as hell. I don't know what <laughs> we're watching anymore, but we'll see where he takes it. Maybe it's just a few initial adepts, which he feels like Lambo won't be ready for. And right now we only have five links on the map. Not a single proper fighting unit other than that has been made. Of course, he has Quints. But Roach Run is being added. I'm really surprised that Lambo didn't check the entire top side of the map because he definitely had the links for it. And still those, but he's just purposely not checking. So Todd, now we're building a second pile in that gateway, which means that Hellraiser really does not want to lose the quicker warpings he could potentially get on the top side of the map. But now we're five minutes into a game. Adept show up at a very random moment, and Hellraiser is still on two bases. Like, Lambo is... He sh should start building units now. Like, I think we have more than enough drones. These adepts do get caught in the center. Whatever the plan was with these adepts, it's not working out. They did not kill a single drone. And this is just, once more, looking very bad for Hellraiser, Yon. At least there's three queens, I guess, on the, or, or at least around Lambo's expo here, the third base. But I'm assuming that's where the shades is going to be eventually. We might be checking. I see some Ling moving up there. He's going to check the wrong. He's going to check 12 o'clock. <laughs> Does he now go to the top right? Seeing this will be key in defending in the best possible way against it by getting roaches. Yeah, but the thing is, it's like, okay, now we're getting six adapts. So these adapts don't have resonating claves. There are Protoss builds where you can go up to three bases, open up with a Stargate, and that actually hit with a lot of adapts with resonating claves, as Hellraiser is now cranking out more and more oracles. But Lambo seems to be familiar with this build because he drops his fire. So we can start getting Mutas or Corruptors. Both of them are going to do totally fine in dealing with these uh, oracles. And 21 workers down is Hellraiser compared to Lambo. I and mean, I know, that the Zerg <laughs> I know that the Zerg players build workers very quickly, Johan, but that number seems a little high to me. Yeah, it is for sure. Like, for Lambo, this is the dream. If you can go up to that many drones, then not lose any and defend against whatever is being thrown at you, which in this case is just a very few adepts. It's gonna be in dreamland here. Immediately after that, those oracles, they do get spotted actually. There was a link on the way here on patrol. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of quints for Lambo. He's still adding three more. He's gonna go up to 13 quints here in a few moments. Yep, the sport crawler is not there, so maybe these oracles can start going to down. They want to fight the queens instead. Well, that's a bold move, but it's working out at first. We're taking down two queens, but... In the end, uh, oracles are a lot more expensive than queens, and these are not the kind of trades that you hope for. Lambo will now also find a tiny city on the top side. The oracles will find a few more drones, that's nice to know. But, no, he warps in three more adepts. I feel like these adepts are just gonna die, because the oracles don't have that much energy anymore either. I mean, it was something, and it gives me hope. As Hellraiser has now three bases up and running in the left side, he's going up to triple Stargate. If he starts building phoenixes right here, right now, Johan, I might become a believer again. I know what you mean. Like he, he, I was just picturing this as potentially doing so much damage, then he did no damage. Now he finally kills six drones, and I'm like, you know what, I'll take it. I really thought for a moment that he was not going to be able to kill anything for the longest time. But yeah, with that posi position getting shut down up there, now it's for Hellraiser to realize what's happening, and the Muta production is on the way. We already got eight of them. Seven more are being made. The plus one oh. attack started as well for Lambo. And when I see what, what's in production on the other side, it's Void Rage right now. These yep. oracles, they get spotted. Mutas can go for the intercept. Yep, the void, uh, these oracles are going to be in a lot of trouble. I mean, they will find a couple of queens. That's nice. Hellraiser probably likes what he's seeing at this point. He's going to take the next fight, too, against the queens. But now he also sees a Muta fly to the other side of the map. And he's like, uh-oh, that's happening? Well, I don't have any phoenixes yet. And it's always very bad news. Maybe the battery can buy some time for the phoenixes to come out. But if I'm Lambo Todd, I'm going for the Stargates here. I unpower these Stargates. And if you unpower these Stargates, I think you unpower the Protoss. Yeah, one Void Rain, one Stalker. Probably won't be able to do much about this. One Phoenix finally came out, but Lambo has so much. Oracles come back. Like, they're, if they're going to be able to do anything about this. No, you're not. You shouldn't even be there. The third base being attacked by Links at the same time. There is no cannon. Lambo is everywhere, and it's looking like you guys might finally be right with the prediction. <laughs> I mean, we have repowered the Stargates, but not before losing 21 probes. And even though we have a fleet, you know, we didn't have a fleet beacon, so we couldn't have any impulse crystals either. But it's too much damage. Lambo keeps his flaw 